This is maybe sort of a rant tonight. I want to talk about science and the way it's regarded in the country where I live, the United States, and maybe the rest of the world, but I don't know. There was a comedian uh, some years ago named Rodney Dangerfield, and his famous line was, I don't get no respect. And I think maybe some scientists feel that way sometimes. I was born in 1948, and about three years previous, three years previous, the United States had developed atomic bombs and used them on Japan, as we all know. And the tremendous power of the atomic bomb that could wipe out a whole city was impressive. It was uh, sad that it was used in war, but in the 50s, when I was growing up, scientists had an aura of respect. And if a scientist said something, you know, and then talking about like, at least in the movies that I saw, if a scientist said something, people followed it. And I guess the first bit of anti intellectualism I remember was during the Vietnam War, I was in my 20s or my late teens. And there were some people who saw that, that science was used for war and, and they kind of uh, decided science was bad, it was evil. And the idea of natural became to be prized. People got into natural food and natural whatever. And the Vietnam War ended and uh, we lost more or less. And the world was kind of crazy and down and there's all the drugs and the war protests of the 60s and into the 70s. And I remember one of the very popular books in the 70s was The Late Great Planet Earth. It was a fundamentalist Christian book, I believe. And it talked about the next the, the coming uh, decade, how there was going to be war and annihilation. And I believe it might have said that Jesus was going to come back and that would be the end of the world. And it was a very well-selling book. A lot of people... Did they secretly yearn for the end of the world? Like it was just too much. The U.S. was moving towards the metric system in the 70s. And the metric system is used by the rest of the world. It's much better than the English system. For instance, try to divide 11 and 3 8 inches by 5. And that was kind of uh, another kind of anti-intellectualism that, you know, those scientists, well, they want metric, but, you know, who needs it? We can just keep our quaint little old ways. And in the 90s, there was the um, supposed link between vaccines and um, autism. At first, I guess it could have been believable. It sounds possible, but there have been decades of studies, as I understand it, that see, it finds no link, but some people believe it's the evil pharmaceutical companies of poisoning children for money. And uh, there again, the evil scientists. By, and of course, evolution. Well, you know, a lot of people, fundamentalist Christians, I guess, don't like the idea of evolution, don't want it being taught, don't think it's true science and climate change. Well, the scientists have been saying for what, 15 years? But who needs to listen to those, um, those eggheads in ivory towers? And that anti-intellectualism bothers me. It occurred to me tonight, I never thought of this before, but the two pictures behind me are from Greece. I was there once, and that was the island of Santorini, I believe. But in the ancient world, uh, I remember one writer uh, well, no, the, the capital of Greece is Athens. And I remember one writer talking about Athens versus Jerusalem in a metaphorical sense of the rational person who uh, wants evidence and who uh, thinks deeply versus the more feeling, intuitive person. And uh, I guess I'm of the first kind anyway. And, and these pictures behind me, but one picture is a church. I guess I could draw sorts of meanings into that if I wanted to.
But anyway, I like them. They're nice pictures. And I guess anti-intellectual anti-intellectualism bothers me not only because of my background. I I got a degree as an engineer. I went back and got a master's degree in math, and I worked in computers. So a lot of head stuff, logical, rational stuff. But it also bothers me because it's like that comedian, Rodney Dangerfield. I don't get no respect, but I should get respect. Well, not I. Science should get respect. Right now, if you're watching this on a TV screen, if the feed is coming over the internet, if you use your cell phone, if you use your GPS, uh, your PC, science is proving itself to you, right? Every second. Science is in contact with reality. I've, I've mentioned this thing before. When scientists design airplanes, they fly. A lot of religious people, when they say something's going to happen, like the great, great planet Earth, or there was a, a man so six or seven or eight years ago who predicted uh, in the US that the Earth was going to, that Jesus was going to come. And he had a specific date, May or April or something, and it didn't happen. But I just feel that, that science should get more respect. Uh, we're, we're foolish. I, as I understand it, uh, for instance, like climate change is one of the reasons there have been these terrible fires this year, this year is 2020, on the west coast of the United States. When the, when the ocean rises, there are cities that are going to be flooded. Uh, climate change means maybe some areas that or good for growing food are going to become not so good. And maybe the people in those countries will go hungry or even starve. There's going to be the consequences. And uh, worse yet, as I understand it, and of course, this is my, these are all my opinions. I don't know if I'm right. As I understand it, climate change has been stymed uh, due to wealthy individuals funding think tanks or publicity of various sorts to convince, obviously, people who don't think much of science. And these people have very strong opinions about why climate change is all nonsense. And maybe they're right, but I don't think they are. And if what I just said is true, the people doing it, you'd think they have enough money. I mean, you know, if, 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 a, if a man or woman robs a store because they're starving, that's understandable. But someone who has $50 million but wants $60 million so they could buy a bigger yacht. And for that, people are going to die and possibly starve. And But as I say, I, I guess I'm on the Athens side, not versus Jerusalem, but that's just the way I tend is more rational. And... Um, we use science every day. Right now, we're waiting for a, a vaccine for COVID. It's taking a while, but no, no one that I know is suggesting we'll just pray. Well, maybe people are. Maybe I just don't know them. But is anybody saying, okay, go out and get COVID? What, what does it matter? But just pray and it'll go away. I read a book some years ago. A woman was a devout Christian and she was confined to a wheelchair some sort of accident and at one point in the book she says how she prayed and she had perfect confidence that she was going to be able to walk because of what it says in the Bible about praying Jesus's name and you know and it didn't happen but yet she remained a believer and I, I guess there's a lot of advantages to being a believer a lot of comfort and whatever but uh, I guess in this series, I'm looking for something I can believe in, but at the same time, use my critical faculties and use, use reason and um, not be moved by emotional tactics, especially emotional fear tactics. I don't think that's asking too much. <laughs>